So grab yourself a cup of coffee or something you like to drink when watching these. Me, I got some herbal tea here. And today we're going to add a SQLite database to our app finally. I've been talking about doing this in the last couple of videos and I've been putting it off. And now we're going to bite the bullet. And this allows us to save some budgets. So if we leave the app and we close the app, we don't lose all the budgets that we create, right? And that's pretty important because in the real world, you want to do something like that. Save this to a database uh, where you won't have happy users. And hopefully you've been enjoying this series. If this is your first video of mine, uh, of the series or ever that you've been watching, feel free to go back at the beginning of this playlist. We've been creating a modern looking WPF application. We've been using a library called myapps.metro and it adds some like predefined styles to our application, kind of like Bootstrap does with HTML and CSS. And also if you're new, feel free to subscribe. That way you can follow along and watch all of the different videos that I make when I think uh, it's relevant. And as I learn things, I like to share them with you. And that's enough of this. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into it. So if we remember, let's just start up the app. If we create a budget right now, it has validation. We added that in the last video, but the thing it doesn't have is a long term storage solution, right? Our storage is volatile. So if we close the app, any budget so we create, let's just do one. It's just saved in memory. So here it is, of course, but if I close it and reopen it, um, those budgets aren't going to be there, right? And so what I want to do is every time a budget has been validated, that it's okay. And the user created it, of course. Um, I want to add it to a SQLite database. That's going to be my database of, uh, of choice. You might want to use MySQL, um, SQL Server, Oracle. I don't know, but we're going to use SQLite in this instance. And we're also going to use Entity Framework Core to make all of these database calls really easy. I've talked about Entity Framework Core in the past. I don't know if I've ever used it in WPF or not. I can't quite remember. Uh, if not, this is it. So the first thing we want to do is I want to check what uh, version of .NET Framework we're using. So we're using 4.7.2, and that's going to be important because we want to use an Entity Framework version that's close to our .NET version, or it'll error out. So 4.7.2, let's remember that, and I'll go to Tools and the NuGet Package Manager, and then Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. And here's where we're going to download and install uh, Entity Framework Core. So there's two things we want. Um, Entity Framework SQLite is what I'll search, and this is the one that we want, uh, Microsoft.EntityFramework.Core.SQLite. So they don't end up having a version 4.7. So I went ahead and I installed 3.1.22. And if I do anything above that, it'll error out just because the versioning is higher than what my .NET framework is. So once you select your version, you want to check which project you want to install this uh, package to. And we only have one project in the solution, my apps. So I just hit install after checking it. And then the other package that we want is Entity Framework Tools. This one right here, and we're gonna do the same thing, 3.1.22, we'll install it on the Maw Apps package. All right, and there we go. So now if I open References, I should now see some Entity Framework Core things, especially the SQLite, and here's the version 3.1.22, perfect. So those both installed, great. The next thing we wanna do is we want to set up how our database is going to look. And to do that, we need to create our context so Entity Framework can create uh, different tables for us. So I'm gonna go back to the Solution Explorer. Let's minimize references. And I'm gonna put another folder in here, and this one is going to be called Data. And that's not important right now. It will be uh, in the future if I remember to use it, but we're going to, in the models now, create another class, and this is going to host our database context. So we'll call this budget context. We'll add that. And then our new class, we're going to make it public. And then we're going to inherit DB context. And we'll have to bring in the namespace for Entity Framework Core, just like that. And now it knows what DB context is. So basically, what this class is going to do, we're going to define some things. 
one of the things we're going to define is where is this SQLite database going to live? And then also, we're going to create tables in our SQLite database based off of models that we already created. So we're going to have a budget table, and it's going to have all of these properties as columns in this database. So the first thing we want to do is say what models do we want to turn into tables? And we want to put public DB set of type budget which is the class that we want to turn into a table. We can call it budgets, and then we give it getters and setters. And that's the only model as of right now. When we add more models in the future, uh, we can go ahead and add them to this context and rebuild our database. But right now, that's the only model we have. The next I want to do is uh, create a string, and this is going to be the path of our database. So we're going to give it an at sign, because if we don't, and we put the backslash, it'll think we're putting in some kind of character, special character, and it won't ignore it. I didn't even give this a name, so let's call it path. And I'm going to have it live on my C drive. I have a folder called temp, and then let's call this database uh, budget dot db so that's the full path of this database and lastly we just want to configure this database let's bring it all together so protected override void on configuration and we'll pass in a db context options builder here this type and it's going to be called options is what we're going to name it and then we'll say options dot use sqlite and then pass in that path well actually i'm sorry we don't pass in the path we pass in the connection string so the connection string is actually we're going to format the string so we'll put a dollar sign and we'll start a string and the connection string for sqlite looks like this it's data space source and then we'll pass in that path variable just like that why is this not liking this oh it's not on configuration it's on configuring there we go Ignore me putting configuration. So that's how it should look. Basically, it's just a, a bunch of stuff to say this is where it's going to live. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and have this create our database for us. So the first thing I want to do is go to tools and back to the NuGet package manager. And then we're going to use the package manager console to write some commands. And the first one, we want to add a migration and we can name this whatever we want. Um, I'm going to name it initial. So let's run that. It'll look at this DB context and it'll create kind of like a blueprint on how it's going to create our SQLite database. And this is it. So we now have a folder named migrations and this is the initial migration that we just created. And you can look at this if you feel uh, inclined to, but basically it's just describing what each property in that budget class is going to look like in the database and how it's going to create it. So we can get rid of, uh, well not get rid of it, we can close this, we don't really care. And let's go back down here, and now that we have this uh, migration created, let's run the update-database down here in the package manager console, hit enter, and it'll start building our database for us. So now if we look, I do have a budget.database. And if you don't have anything to open this with a SQLite database, uh, Google DB browser SQLite and download that and install it because that is what I use to uh, look at our database. It's really nice. So I'll hit open database on here and go find it. And now that it's open, here is our budgets table and we can browse the data. We can switch to the table budgets and here we are. We don't have any data yet, um, but our table's made. So that's all I wanted to do in this video. In the next video, whenever the user hits create budget and it goes through the validation, we'll have it add that budget to this table. So stay tuned for that and hope to see you there. Take care.